Good morning, panelists and distinguished guests. My name is Dan Wellen, and I handle operations for C4ST. You've just heard from our CEO, Frank Clegg, about the deficiencies of the code and the process for its review as it stands today. I've made the trip here to Ottawa to tell you about how it is being applied on the ground level and how it is being used against Canadians to recklessly install wireless infrastructure across our country. The first example of this is school boards across Canada rushing to install Wi-Fi in their classrooms while parents are not adequately informed. The World Health Organization has placed all wireless radiation, including Wi-Fi, on the list of Class 2B carcinogens. This means that exposing children in schools to all-day wireless radiation could be considered the equivalent to exposing them to lead, DDT, or any of the other known toxins on the same list of Class 2B carcinogens. In this case, the school board's response in exposing 150,000 children once again, the expected recital of Safe Code 6. I quote, as with all health issues, the Peel Board takes advice from public health agencies. We will continue to rely on the expertise and standards of organizations like Health Canada and the Peel Public Health to guide our use of technology in schools. As I regularly review the most current scientific literature to inform respective guidelines and policies based on the weight of evidence. We will also continue to comply with all gover governing legislation to ensure we provide safe and appropriate places to learn and work as always, and as always, our decisions are based on the best interests of our students. On a different front, municipalities across Canada are being faced with an onslaught of reckless tower and antenna placements. No sensitive land use seems to be off limits to advance the blanket coverage industry so desires. Daycares, schools, playgrounds, fire stations, densely populated residential zones, it makes no difference. A willing and possibly unaware property owner is all that is required. In this community, industry contracted space on a fire station antenna, despite the 2004 International Association of Firefighters resolution rejecting this usage, citing health concerns. This tower is less than 50 feet from a church and a daycare, as well as you can see directly in the middle of a densely populated residential zone. The local community up in arms took this issue to a municipal council who directed them to speak with the proponent directly. Following the antenna siting process, the same process recommended to Industry Canada in the 2008 Risk Sciences International document titled Evaluation of Industry Canada's Communication on Antenna Tower Siting which was prepared by the former chair of this panel, Dr. Daniel Kruski. Bell, the proponent that was responsible in this last case, responded to the community concerns in the usual fashion, citing Safety Code 6. And I quote, Industry Canada has made compliance with Safety Code 6 on a cumulative basis, i.e. taking into account all of the emissions of a given site, a condition of a license. Questions regarding, questions regarding and comments surrounding the relevance and appropriateness of Safety Code 6 as an overall measure for radio communication broadcasters are best directed to Health Canada themselves. Health Canada readily accepts feedback and questions for their discussion. We would encourage you to make your views known to Health Canada for consideration of the review of Safety Code 6. In conclusion, I would like to confirm Bell's position that the site is safe and when commissioned will operate in accordance with all applicable health and safety requirements. As is the case time after time, town after town, Canadians are left without a voice. In this next photo you're looking at, in this next photo you're looking at a young child looking out their bedroom towards eight antenna newly installed on a historic building directly next door, owned again in this case by proponent Bell Canada. These antenna are less than 20 feet away from where this child sleeps. Our homes are meant to be a safe refuge from the uncertainty of the world outside. This is no longer the case. Imagine for a second installing a bubble over a home and pumping in secondhand smoke 24 seven forever. What is the difference? Both are involuntary exposures. However, one now known and accepted to be deadly. The other, an all too common reality for Canadians is sheltered and permitted under safety code six. disconnect present between Industry Canada, Health Canada, 
and Safety Code 6 was reinforced just this past week when Industry Minister James Moore was quoted regarding a tower dispute in Vancouver, saying that saying the government will listen to local concerns. However, it is the companies themselves that have to demonstrate that there is public health concern. As we've just seen, those same companies do this by hiding behind Industry Canada's adopted guidelines for wireless radiation. This process of pointing to each other furthers the perpetual motion machine of Safety Code 6, leaving Canadians vulnerable and at the mercy of industry. The least we might expect is Industry Canada to measure the tower and antenna sites they do license based on the emission levels contained in Safety Code 6. The video is not working here, but this is a um, this is a clip from a town hall meeting in Oakville. Oh, here we go. Volume, please. I'm of, a gener I'm of a generation that embraces technology. That being said, mine and every Canadian's right to live in a healthy environment of our choosing, especially in our own homes and place of education. This choice is removed from our lives as Canadians when industry uses Safety Code 6 to involuntarily expose us to the undesired and unsafe levels of wireless radiation. Thank you, panel. <laughs> 